Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to deduce from Hadamard's theorem that if we have an entire function f, which is of growth order rho, where rho is not an integer, then f must have infinitely many zeros. So, to get started, let's just start by saying that we are going to do this proof by contradiction. So, by way of contradiction, assume that there exist finite zeros. And we are going to enumerate them to be a1, a2, until we get to a n. So those are going to be our zeros. And then without loss of generality, we can assume that none of them are a zero, or none of them are zero, so we have a bunch of non-zero zeros, which sounds great to say, but we're just going to assume that none of them are zeros. So then what we can say is by Hadamard's theorem, that means that we can write f of z is equal to e to the g of z times the product from n equals 1 to big N of 1 minus z over a n e to the z over a n plus uh, z squared over 2 a n squared plus dot 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 plus z to the k over k a sub n to the k. And there we go. So now what are these different things going on? Well, this g of z, what, what is that coming from? Well, in Hadamard's theorem, g of z is of degree less than or equal to rho, and it must be an integer. So we are going to say it's less than or equal to degree k, where since rho is not an integer, we know that rho is going to be strictly between k and k plus 1. So it's of degree at most k. So now, what is this all going to tie in together? Well, what we're doing is we are adding up n copies of something that looks like this. So what that means is we can rewrite f of z as e to the g of z times, I don't know what this function is going to be, but we have a whole bunch of products of e to some function q of z, which is going to be a polynomial, None of the terms are bigger than z to the k, and we just have a whole bunch of them. And so it turns out that both g and q are degree less than or equal to k. And then what we have is we also are going to then have this product, which is going to be also a polynomial. So p of z is going to be a degree n polynomial. So now what's going to happen? Well, now we have f of z is equal to some polynomial times e to the g of z plus q of z. Now notice that this entire thing up here is degree at most k, which is then going to tell us that our growth order is going to be whatever the growth of p times the growth of e to all of that stuff is. Now, from this other video that I made, we proved that the growth order of two functions multiplied together is less than or equal to the growth order, is less than or equal to the maximum of the two growth orders. Which means that because any polynomial has growth order zero, which if you're curious, go ahead and check this video out, what we're able to do from that is that means that the growth order is less than or equal to the maximum of the growth order for p and the growth order for g plus q, which is the same thing as saying is the maximum of 0 and k. Well, that's going to be k. So the growth of f has to be less than or equal to k, which is a contradiction, because the growth of f was rho, So we have rho is less than or equal to k, which is strictly less than rho, 
that gives us our contradiction. And so all of that together tells us that therefore, if f is entire and of growth order, which is not an integer, then f must have infinitely many zeros. Because otherwise, it's going to get to some contradiction. So the only, func the on only entire functions that have growth order of an integer have finitely many zeros. I hope that was a useful video for you. If it was, please let me know what other videos you would like to see me do. I hope to see you in a future video, and without further ado, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and good luck with all of your math.